do you need to get across the major announcements in business applications from Microsoft Ignite, but you do not have time to sit and watch the whole event? I have got you covered. I'm going to set a timer here. We're going to do this in five minutes and you'll be totally up to date. So there we go. Clock is ticking. Let's see if we can do this. First thing I want to talk to you about here is Power Automate and the ability to create flows with natural language built with AI. Let's have a look at this. Here's a new option. You describe it, AI builds it. You go in, scenario here is that when a new deal is signed, send a message on Teams and the person is just typing that in and it's giving some suggestions in there. We fill in some of the details about where it needs to connect to in terms of what data source we're working with, but this is click and point experience. You don't need to know any code. And then it's going to go, here is your suggested flow and boom, it's done. How good is that? Obviously you can go ahead and edit that and do whatever else you want in there if you want to make it a little bit more. But if you're a beginner getting started with this, a find power automate is at the upper end of that low code in terms of expressions and things you need to know. This genuinely brings it down to a no code natural language experience. This is the start of something much bigger going on across the whole platform with natural language. So watch this space and make sure you have a play with that one. The second one here is Power Apps Cards. This was announced at the Power Platform Conference in September, but we're giving it a bigger audience here by making sure it gets on the main stage at Ignite and it's absolutely well worthy of its place. This is using the same skills you use to build Canvas apps, so power effects, formulas, connect to your data source and so on, to create something like what adaptive cards used to do. Now adaptive cards, you used to have to know a whole other thing, which I never really got into. Really looking forward to having a crack at this, which is building out these little, it's like a very tiny app, like a very specific app that does this, lands in Teams. So that scenario then of that notification coming through and then the person in Teams can click on one of these buttons to assign a project manager and that will behave in the same way as you would see with a button on a Canvas app. How am I going for time? Slightly under two minutes for the first two. We're on track. Let me tell you a governance story here and do not run away. This is a good governance story. What we're talking about here is managed environments. So this is all about making it easier to get started with getting that control and governance for low code makers, which is one of the most important things and biggest blockers in Power Platform. More visibility, more control, less effort for administrators to do things like this. Now, first up, important thing, it's got its own icon. So this is a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> and then what we're doing is things like this, limiting sharing to certain groups, having a solution checker there so that every single solution that comes in is being run through that solution checker. Having things here, we've got this make a welcome content, specific stuff that you want to make sure your makers are getting to before they start building so that it's following what you need right from the start and also a heap of analytics you reckon this is Charles Lamana's real dashboard? <laughs> so what we've got here is things like the most used apps, the least used apps. You've also got things in here around licensing consumption and which licenses are being used and where so that you can really manage all of that as well. Now stick with me to the end. I'm going to talk about Power Pages, but the last thing that's coming up here is something you might know about, but there's a feature in there that I didn't know was there that I'm very excited about it. Power Pages, next evolution in that portal story, is now generally available with a simplified licensing model. Please subscribe to my channel if you'd like to know more about all these things. I've got some content coming on Power Pages, lots of people asking me for this. So what we've got here is a low-code experience. It's a whole lot easier to use than what we had in the past. Very easy to bring other components in as well. So bringing in things like embedded Power BI, surveys and so on. And then if you do need to do this, we've got this edit code button here that takes you straight into it. As I said, much simplified licensing model compared to what we have that's all been announced at GA. Like this video, stay tuned for more on that. All right, I've got one minute to go here to talk to you about the last feature, which is Viva Sales. Now, this became generally available a couple of weeks ago, but some stuff that came through here that they showed at Ignite is something that I hadn't seen before that is genuinely really exciting. So Viva Sales allows you to work in Outlook connected to either Dynamics 365 or Salesforce, doing a lot of that work inside Outlook, which is where sellers are working all the time. So this is a story about productivity and making that a whole lot easier.
where you're working. We have this add to Salesforce button here, obviously of the same thing for add to Dynamics 365. But the thing we saw here is that this is automatically populating it from the email signature. <laughs> yes, this is something I've heard people ask for a lot. If you would like to know more about Viva Sales, the conversation intelligence feature that transcribes conversations and pulls out action points is absolutely amazing. Check out my video here to learn more and right under five minutes. Thanks for watching.